Welcome everyone. Thank you for attending my master thesis. I really appreciate it. I'll be presenting on a paleoecological study of the Middle Triassic within Fabric Canyon. Thank you. First of all, this presentation is dedicated to my late grandfather Elias and my ever-loving grandmother Leonor. This is a throwback pic to when I first started looking at rocks. So, you know, that just set the tone for everything. So let's get to it. This presentation will be composed of a background and project importance, followed by hypothesis and research goals, then methods, followed by results and interpretations, and finally conclusions. This is Raup and Sebkowski's curve, showing marine invertebrate diversity through time. On the x-axis is time. The most recent time is on the far right. On the y-axis is number of families. There are three groups of fauna. The first is the Cambrian fauna in yellow, in which trilobites were common fauna. Then there was the Paleozoic fauna in green, in which brachiopods were a common fauna. And finally, in blue, the modern fauna, in which bivalves were a common fauna. Fauna diversity has varied through time, is one observation that we can make from this graph. Diversity refers to the quantity and different fauna. Diversity changes is as follows. From 600 to 500 million years ago, the Cambrian fauna were the most diverse. Then there was a diversity shift to the Paleozoic fauna, which were most diverse from 500 to 250 million years ago. And the final diversity shift happened about 250 million years ago, where modern fauna become most diverse. It wasn't until the end Permian mass extinction, shown here, when the modern fauna become most diverse. The effects of the end Permian mass extinction has been studied, including the opening of niches for organisms to conquer, and understanding how and why the Paleozoic to modern fauna transition happened. To the left is a brachiopod and echinoderm. These are Paleozoic fauna representatives who lived on the ocean sea floor, something like this. Paleozoic fauna were not as mobile as modern fauna. These are some characteristics of Paleozoic fauna. Then we have modern fauna representatives, including bivalves and gastropods, who were more active than Paleozoic fauna and would bury into the sea floor, something like this. So modern fauna were more diverse after the Ampermian mass extinction. So, this project is relevant because clarifying the Paleozoic to modern fauna transition helps understand the mechanics that drive marine life. Such studies can be used to understand the changing modern organisms. So let's take a look at studies from the Paleozoic to modern fauna during the Middle Triassic. The Middle Triassic is a time period shown here, approximately 247 to 237 million years ago. Study sites from the Paleozoic to modern fauna transition include China and Europe. It's important to study the Middle Triassic because these studies listed above suggest that the Paleozoic to modern fauna transition happened in the Middle Triassic. Here's the first study by Payne et al. 2004 in the Great Bank of Guizhou in China. On the left is a map of the study site. On the right is carbon-13 marine isotope data along with fauna diversity data. On the x-axis is carbon isotopes in per mil ranging from negative three to eight. On the y-axis time is featured the oldest time featured is the late Permian, some 253 million years ago. And the youngest time featured is the late Triassic, about 235 million years ago. Payne compares Middle Triassic and Late Triassic carbon isotopes to Late Permian and Early Triassic carbon isotopes to determine the relationship that carbon isotopes have with fauna diversity. 
For example, low fauna diversity is expected during times of unstable carbon isotopes. And that's observed here as the late Permian and early Triassic carbon isotopes vary from negative 2 to 8 per mil, while also observing low fauna diversity. Then Payne finds that carbon isotopes stabilize in the late Triassic and middle Triassic relative to the early Triassic and late Permian. And as isotopes stabilize in the middle Triassic and late Triassic, shown here, fauna diversity also increase. Payne suggests that marine carbon isotopes stabilize, result in an increase of fauna abundance. These observations are are further tested by Cortet et al. in 2005 in various European sites and comes up with similar interpretations. Next is Palfi's study in 2003 who looks at middle Triassic brachiopods in Hungary. Palfi's goal was to determine if these brachiopods fell under Paleozoic or modern fauna. To do this, Palfi used Leighton's 1999 shell ornamentation scheme, which is shown here. So Paleozoic fauna would show less ornamented shells, while modern fauna would show more ornamented shells. Palfi finds that most brachiopods fall under the Paleozoic fauna, but there is some evidence of modern fauna. This suggests that the Paleozoic to modern fauna transition was occurring during the Middle Triassic. With that said, let's take a look at study sites for this project. On the left is a map of Western United States. These study sites are located here in relation to California. On the right is a paleogeographic map of the Triassic. Study sites of interest are Favret and American Canyon. Favret and American Canyon were on the coast during the Triassic. So this supports the observation of marine rocks in modern desert Nevada. The first study site is Fabric Canyon. Fabric Canyon has been mapped and described for taxonomy. Taxonomy refers to classifying fauna in groups. Additionally, biostratigraphic work was used to help date these rocks. Fabric Canyon records the fossil hill member, which is aged to be Illyrian a substage of the Anician within the Middle Triassic. Nichols and Silberling, 1977, and Lucas et al., 2007, described sedimentology as fossiliferous limestone interbedded with shale. So now to look at the next study site, American Canyon, which also records the fossil hill member. Nicholson Silberling and Lucas et al. describe sedimentology as homogeneous limestone with horizons consisting of siltstone and sand. So, both Favorite and American Canyon recording the Fossil Hill member establishes the possibility of comparing the two locations. Fauna observed in Favorite and American Canyon include cephalopods and bivalves. The last background information that I'd like to go over on the left is Fabric Canyon, on the right is American Canyon. This project uses marine carbon isotopes to describe some environmental conditions along with further correlating Fabric to American Canyon. For example, positive carbon isotopes could be caused by an increase of organic burial via phytoplankton or an increase in C4 plants and suggest fauna recovery, while negative carbon isotopes could be caused by volcanic CO2 release and silicate weathering and suggest mass extinctions. For example, if Favret and American Canyon record positive, stable carbon isotopes, then there's a chance that fauna abundance is high. Another interpretation of carbon isotopes is that isotopes do not record their original signal because they have undergone diagenesis. Diagenesis refers to change from their original uh, values. Therefore, if isotopes are 
did undergo diagenesis, then they can't be used for the purposes of this study. I hypothesize that marine carbon isotopes in fabric in American Canyon stabilize and result in abundant fauna. In green are Payne's results, and in purple are Cortez's results. My hypothesis is based on work by Payne and Cortez, who suggest that fauna increased as carbon conditions stabilize. This hypothesis is tested by determining fauna abundance, depositional environment, and some environmental conditions. Depositional environment is represented by this model on the right. So as you move eastward, you'd be getting closer to the ocean, to the beach shore. Depositional environment helps determine where rocks formed. So rocks could have formed in a marine basin, in an outer ramp, in a middle ramp, or maybe an inner ramp. Doing so contextualizes fauna abundance and environmental conditions. This project intends to produce the lacking fauna abundance and geochemical data that helps reconstruct the Paleozoic to modern fauna transition. So let's let, take a look at methodology. <sighs> methodology includes a sedimentological analysis, a taxonomic analysis, a carbon isotope analysis, and comparing fabric to American Canyon. So first, for the macro sedimentological analysis, lithology and stratigraphy was completed summer 2014. Lithology refers to rock composition, and stratigraphy refers to rock composition through time. So here's the rock composition. Oldest rock would be found at the bottom, youngest rock would be found at the top. Samples were collected when possible every 1.5 meters for a total of 185 meters. 119 of those meters were recorded with Fabric Canyon and 66 of those meters were recorded with American Canyon. After samples were collected, a microfaces description was conducted using thin sections. Thin sections complement hand sample description and help determine depositional environment because of a more precise look at rock, including lithology and fossils. Thin sections were digitally scanned using computer software at Dr. Frank Corsetti's lab at USC. Then, using Photoshop, a 75 millimeter grid was imposed onto each thin section to identify lithology and fossils. Thin sections have a 94% confidence using the 200 point count per thin section standard. For example, a thin section with 30 micrite points can range from 24 to 36 micrite points. So micrite refers to fine sediment. So now let's move on to the macro taxonomic analysis. The macro taxonomic analysis uh, helps to identify class the organisms in a class level. Um, class level of taxonomic identification is used because of the sheer number of characteristics per thin section. So this scale of fauna identif identification allows to differentiate between brachiopods and bivalves. Following is the micro taxonomic analysis. So this method helps look at fossils under the microscope that you can't see in hand sample. With that, Combining the sedimentological and taxonomic analyses helps determine depositional environment. Depositional environment helps test if organisms are tracking depositional environment or if they are absent from the rock record. Specifically, it's more likely to find echinoderms, algae, and gastropods in a middle ramp, and it's more likely to, found, to find cephalopods and bivalves in an outer ramp. So if these organisms are not observed, then they are absent from the rock record, uh, which could suggest low fauna abundance. On the other hand, if at first echinoderms, algae, and gastropods are observed, but then a change to cephalopods and bivalves happens, would suggest a depositional environment change from middle ramp to outer ramp. The second to last method is carbon isotope analysis. To the left is Fabric Canyon, to the right is American Canyon. Each stratigraphic column records its own isotope trend. 
The project goals were to more closely correlate Favorite to American Canyon and determine some environmental conditions. Samples were processed in Dr. Sean Lloyd's Stable Isotope Geochemistry Lab here at Cal State Fullerton. Thin section billets were identified for non-diagenetic affected surfaces. Billets were sampled for bulk Delta C13 carbonate. Samples were processed in triplicates and converted to powdered form. Those powdered samples were then put into vials, acidified, and left overnight, and then extracted for CO2, mass, and total inorganic carbon. Finally, the final results were plotted onto the stratigraphic column, along with fauna abundance and depositional environment to track through time. And finally, the last method that I used is comparing Favorite to American Canyon. So the goal is to compare apples to apples, so an outer ramp to an outer ramp, or a middle ramp to a middle ramp. Depending on the depositional environment, we're not comparing a middle ramp to an outer ramp. Comparing these sites helps determine if similar compositions affect both locations. For example, similar fauna should be observed at both sites if they both record outer ramps. So this leads to results and interpretations. Which will proceed as followed, starting with carbon isotopes, then sedimentology and taxonomy, and finally I'll compare Favorite to American Canyon. So we'll start with Favorite Canyon carbon isotopes. On the left you see Favorite Canyon's stratigraphic column along with its carbon isotope plot circled in orange. On the right is Payne's results of carbon isotopes in green, which range from 1 to 2.5 per mil. Then there is Cortez results in purple, which range from negative 1 to 2 per mil. And finally, Fabric Canyon's results ranging from 5.5 to 2.2 per mil. Fabric Canyon results vary in range more than Payne and Cortez. So next is American Canyon carbon isotope results. American Canyon results are here in red. This slide is set up the same way as a prior slide, just substituted with American Canyon results. So then American Canyon results vary from negative 2.3 to 1.5 per mil. So American Canyon carbon isotope results vary more than Payne and Cortez. For interpretations, carbon isotope variation in Favre and American Canyon relative to Payne and Cortez could mean two things. One, Favre and American Canyon were affected by, by poor carbon conditions. Thus, poor environmental conditions could have hindered the Paleozoic to modern fauna transition. This interpretation is much different than prior studies, which suggest that the carbon isotopes stabilize in the Middle Triassic. The second interpretation is the more simplistic interpretation, that this section underwent diagenesis and it that this section underwent diagenesis at a scale not observed by the hand. Here's a study on carbon isotopes having undergone diagenesis. If diagenesis is the case, then carbon isotopes are unusable for the purpose of this study. A study by Swart and Eberly in 2005 looks at a ramp carbonate system. The two locations that I'd like you to focus on are Unda in purple and Clino in green, here and here. So Unda is relatively more shallow than Clino, similar to Favorite in American Canyon. So Favorite Canyon analog is Unda, and American Canyon analog is Clino. This is important because it helps interpret isotope variability. Clino, shown here, has relatively more positive carbon isotopes than Unda, but both upper portions have considerably more negative carbon isotopes than the bottom, designated here in the red box. Sort and Eberly suggest that these two locations underwent diagenesis, therefore these carbon results are not usable to correlate the sections. Sort and Eberly suggest that these two locations underwent diagenesis, 
which ha could have occurred via meteoric water when the section was exposed via sea level change. Additionally, Kleino shows a relatively more positive carbon trend than UNDA. And this is because UNDA would be closer to the meteoric water source that would alter the carbon isotopes. Swart and Eberle's study is used to interpret that Favorite in American Canyon underwent diagenesis carbon isotopes underwent diagenesis. Therefore, carbon isotopes could not be used to correlate the two sections. But Favre in American Canyon can still be compared because of prior biostratigraphic work. Next is Favre Canyon sedimentological and taxonomic results. So on the left, we have the stratigraphic column. On the right, we have abundance data, which comes from the thin section point counts. In blue is micrite, so it's lithology. In orange is fauna abundance. And fauna abundance is further broken down here per organism. The first 31 meters of Fabric Canyon are composed of thin mudstone, waxstone, and packstone beds with one thick mudstone bed and one thick siltstone bed. Fauna observed include 58% echinoderms, 28% algae, and 14% gastropods. So, the first 31 meters of Fabric Canyon is interpreted to have formed in a low energy depositional environment, such as a middle ramp and an outer ramp, based on the observed mudstone, waxstone, and packstone beds. This section has no shell, which would be composed of more fine mud and would have been deposited in a basin, and has relatively little uh, siltstone, which would be composed of coarser grains and would form an inner ramp. Therefore, it's less likely that the first 31 meters formed in an inner ramp or a basin. Then, to further differentiate between a middle ramp and an outer ramp, fauna are used using Flugel's ramp microfaces techniques. The observed echinoderms, algae, and gastropods suggest that the first 31 meters formed in a middle ramp. So now to look at the remaining of Fabric Canyon. We'll be looking at meters 33 to 119, which are composed of thick mudstone interbedded with thin waxstone and packstone beds. This portion of Fabric Canyon is interpreted to have formed in a low energy depositional environment, like a middle ramp or outer ramp, because of the mudstone, waxstone, and packstone beds observed. And the, there was no siltstone like prior, which would be composed of more coarse sand and would have formed an inner ramp and has very limited shell, which would have deposited in a basin. So then using the organisms observed, which are 73% cephalopods and 15% bivalves, I interpret this part of Fabric Canyon to have formed an outer ramp. Additionally, Meters 33 to 119 consist of black mudstone at 40 to 45 meters and 91.5 meters. This is important because it's evidence of sea level change to deeper marine settings when there is, where there is less oxygen that could affect fauna abundance. Fabric Canyon. So there are fewer fauna observed at meters 91.5 but there's no change of fauna abundance at meters 40 to 45. So, Fabric Canyon transitioning from a middle ramp to an outer ramp suggests a transgressive sea level change. Additionally, smaller transgressive events are interpreted via the black mudstone. This interpretation supports that fauna were tracking depositional environment and that fauna are not absent from the rock record. So now, to look at American Canyon. American Canyon is composed of thick mudstone and waxstone beds interbedded with thin waxstone, packstone, and shell beds. American Canyon hosts 28% cephalopods and 62% bivalves. Combining the observations of lithology and fauna suggests that, this part, that American Canyon formed in an outer ramp. Furthermore, shell horizons are observed through the section. 
shell forms in a basin that is relatively deeper than an outer ramp. The shell is evidence of relatively small scale transgressive sea level change. Overall, American Canyon did not undergo a depositional environment change like Fabric Canyon. So now to compare Fabric to American Canyon. The comparisons will focus on outer ramps because American Canyon does not record a middle ramp. So first we'll look at lithology. Fabric Canyon is composed of 95% micrite, while American Canyon is composed of 93% micrite. Then we have fauna abundance. In Fabric Canyon, we have 5% fauna abundance, and in American Canyon, there is 7% fauna abundance. So, so far, these two locations look similar. Cephalopods and bivalves are most abundant at both locations. So Fabric Canyon records 15% bivalves and 73% cephalopods, while American Canyon records 62% bivalves and 28% cephalopods. More abundant in Fabric Canyon at 73%, while bivalves are more abundant in American Canyon at 62%. The difference in abundance between cephalopods and bivalves is supported by the relative coastal setting Bivalves can live in deeper marine settings, such as American Canyon. Fabric Canyon is relatively more shallow than American Canyon, as shown by this depositional model based on stratigraphy and taxonomy. Additionally, carbon isotope results support that Fabric Canyon is closer to the shore, as, fewer fa as Fabric Canyon underwent more diagenesis than American Canyon. More diagenesis was possible because Fabric Canyon was closer to the shore where meteoric water was more accessible to cause diagenesis. Higher bivalve abundance in American Canyon is evidence of the interpretation that American Canyon formed in a relatively deeper setting than Fabric Canyon. So now to compare other Middle Triassic outer ramps to Fabric in American Canyon. So first we have this study still looking at the Fossil Hill member, still in Nevada, approximately here. But this study is conducted in South Canyon by Bonuso. This Middle Triassic outer ramp records low fauna abundance. So from left to right, Fabric Canyon records 5% fauna abundance. American Canyon records 7% fauna abundance and South Canyon records 12% fauna abundance. The observations of South Canyon recording low fauna abundance supports the observations of low fauna abundance in these local Middle Triassic outer ramps. So another study conducted by Shatzlov 2013. The description conducted by Shatzlov is here for this part of the section. Shatzlov interprets this section to have formed an outer ramp Although Shatzlov does not conduct fauna abundance work, he declares that low fauna content is observed. So this further supports low fauna abundance in Middle Triassic outer ramps. So one last matter that I'd like to go over. It was mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that fauna transitioned from Paleozoic to modern fauna after the Ampermian mass extinction. Here are a few examples of Paleozoic and modern fauna in outer ramps. The goal is to determine if fabric in American Canyon resemble a Paleozoic fauna, a modern fauna, or somewhere in between. The study by Abadi et al. was conducted near Tehran. Here, Tehran is just north of Iran. This outer ramp is geologically aged to be early Carboniferous, designated here by the blue rectangle. So we're in the time frame where Paleozoic fauna are most diverse. Fauna observed include brachiopods and echinoderms. This is one example of Paleozoic fauna. So now for another example, we have Phelps et al. 2008, who conducts work in New Mexico here, just north of Texas. This outer ramp is geologically aged to be early Permian. So still in the time frame where Paleozoic fauna are most diverse. Fauna observed here include echinoderms and brachiopods. So that was yet another example of Paleozoic fauna. So now to move on to modern fauna examples. This study by Keatsman et al. 2015 
was conducted in western Argentina, shown here. This outer ramp is geologically aged to be late Jurassic. So now we're in the time frame where modern fauna are most diverse. Fauna observed in this study include cephalopods, bivalves, and gastropods. So the final example that I want to go over for modern fauna is this study by Badenas et al. 2003. The study was conducted in eastern Spain. This outer ramp is also geologically aged to be late Jurassic. And fauna observed in this study include bivalves and gastropods. So let's compare these Paleozoic and modern fauna examples to Favre and American Canyon. If you recall, Favre and American Canyon outer ramps record cephalopods, mostly cephalopods and bivalves, to a less extent gastropods and echinoderms, and no brachiopods were observed. So if organisms indicative of Paleozoic fauna are brachiopods and echinoderms, and if organisms indicative of modern fauna are gastropods and bivalves, then Fabret and American Canyon are in transition. They are somewhere in between Paleozoic and modern fauna. First, the abundance of cephalopods, which are more mobile fauna, supports modern fauna characterization. And both locations are dominated by bivalves and no brachiopods, which is evidence of modern fauna. This may suggest that the transition to modern fauna happened, but Favre and American Canyon do not record many gastropods, which are important organisms in outer ramps of modern fauna. Thus, I interpret Favre and American Canyon to be transitioning from Paleozoic to modern fauna. So now for conclusions, this hypothesis was tested The original hypothesis of this study was that marine carbon isotopes stabilize in the Middle Triassic and result in abundant fauna. This hypothesis was tested by deter determining fauna abundance, depositional environment, and some environmental conditions uh, using carbon isotopes. Interpretations suggest that fauna lived in their expected depositional environment. Gastropods and echinoderms were observed in a middle ramp and cephalopods and bivalves were observed in an outer ramp. This means that fauna were tracking depositional environment. Expecting to find bivalves in an outer ramp is like expecting to find in and out in California. Fabric Canyon and American Canyon could not be more precisely correlated because isotopes underwent diagenesis. But it can be stated that low fauna abundance is observed in middle Triassic outer ramps as prior studies suggest. What can be taken from this study is that signs to those curveballs that catch you off guard. Carbon isotope samples did not appear to have undergone diagenesis in hand sample, but were altered at an atomic level. Finally, this project provides data from the Western United States, a location with limited opportunities to reconstruct the Paleozoic to modern fauna. In the end, we better understand local Middle Triassic outer ramps. Thank you. Um, I'd like to acknowledge these lab groups and funding sources, the Evolutionary Paleoecology Lab, the Lloyd Stable Isotope Geochemistry Lab, the Corsetti Lab at USC, and funding sources, ASI, the Los Angeles Basin Geological Society, and the Northern California Geological Society. And also my thesis advisor, Dr. Nicole Venuso, who supported my development as a paleontologist and overall uh, scientist. Uh, something I can't forget is her recommendation to just read, whether it's scientific, a novel, or a newspaper. I'd like to thank my thesis committee members, Dr. Sean Lloyd and Dr. Adam Woods, for their mentoring and being so good at describing uh, concepts. The Evolutionary Paleoecology Lab crew, the CSUF Geology Department, uh, my undergraduate mentors at UCR, Dr. Mary Drozer and Dr. David Morofka, for helping me. Uh, my coworkers at Southern California Coastal Water Research Project, uh, my sixth grade elementary school teacher, 
Mr. Blind Ray Callahan, who gave hope to a timid kid who wanted to be a punk rocker and a little more social. Uh, my buds at, uh, from high school, UCR and CSUF. Um, and finally, my parents, Silvano and Liliana, for coming to a country where they didn't have any prospects or know anyone and took that risk. Thanks.